Heavy fighting is reported in Syria despite a diplomatic drive to bolster a tattered ceasefire. And nowhere is worse than in Aleppo. On Tuesday, another hospital was hit in the city, killing an unknown number of people. More than 250 people have been killed there over the past two weeks alone. And one monitoring group described one battle there as the fierce in more than a year. Elsewhere, a freeze on fighting expired in one rebel-held area east of Damascus, which was reportedly then hit by more than 20 airstrikes. CNN's Frederick Plankton is travelling with Russian troops in Syria and he joins us on the phone now near Hama. Fred, many of our viewers will recall that Russia said it would effectively withdraw from Syria, yet you are on the ground with them. What's the deal? What are they saying to you? Well, the Russians certainly haven't withdrawn, uh, Linda. Quite to the contrary, what we're seeing is that uh, while they have fewer fighter jets uh, on their air base uh, in Latakia, they still do fly a lot of missions, and there certainly still are dozens of jets uh, that are still out there. We were on the uh, tarmac uh, in that air base for, I would say, uh, maybe one or two hours, and we saw several dozen fighter jets uh, take off, some of them also landing after completing their missions. In fact, the Russians told us that over the past four days, uh, they've flown some 87 sorties. They say most of them combating ISIS targets, but they also say, of course, that they're policing the ceasefire as well. And they also acknowledge that that ceasefire isn't a lot of trouble, specifically in the Aleppo area. And they say the big problem they believe at that, uh, in that area is that they say that Jabhat al-Nusra, which is, of course, the offshoot of al-Qaeda in Syria, keeps shelling government areas. They, for their part, say they have no influence, for instance, over Bashar al-Assad's air force, which, of course, has been accused of targeting civilian uh, uh, targets in Aleppo as well. One of the interesting things that they told me is they, they do believe that there could be a ceasefire in the making. They say they're working very closely with the Americans, and they say that that cooperation is something that that could bear fruit. So they say they're playing a constructive role, but also saying, of course, there are still a lot of difficulties out there, especially considering how bad the situation is in Aleppo at this point, Linda. It is interesting, Fred, that the U.S. and Russia are working together now. How will that partnership work, given their opposing positions on the Assad regime? Well, that's, that is probably going to be the, the really big test, the really big issue that these two sides are going to have. And it's not one that's going to go away. If you recall some of the remarks that Secretary of State John Kerry made over the past couple of days, where he said that uh, Bashar al-Assad didn't think that all of a sudden he could use the ceasefire to start bombing the rebels, that he could use it uh, to, improve, uh, to improve his position. That certainly isn't something that went down well in Russia. And I spoke to senior Russian officials only a couple of days ago, and he said that the Russians at this point simply believe that Bashar al-Assad is still the best option in their mind, and it's someone who they're sticking to at this point in time. So that's going to be a big sticking point, a big problem. The big question is, are these two sides going to be able to forward a process of reconciliation, a political reconciliation, and also, of course, of the cessation of hostilities in spite of the fact of that fundamental difference that they have on Bashar al-Assad, Linda? Yeah, huge challenges. Frederick Plyton uh, reporting for us near Hamas, Syria. Thank you very much. And as Fred was just telling us, Russia is still very much involved in the fighting. And as he mentioned, it's also part of the UN Security Council, which will hold an urgent meeting on the violence in Aleppo just three hours from now. Well, let's bring in CNN's Matthew Chance, who's in Moscow, with more for us on that. Uh, Matthew, this crisis threatens, this crisis particularly in Aleppo, threatens to de derail the peace efforts. Uh, Russia's Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov has spoken about the meeting in Berlin. What is Russia hoping to see come from those talks? Well, from those talks in Berlin and from the session of the UN Security Council, of course, uh, on which uh, Russia obviously has a, a veto and a seat, um, it wants to see, publicly at least, um, uh, moves towards the implementation of a, a ceasefire across the country. There was a deal done with, uh, with, between the government and the rebels, essentially talked about a few days ago in Geneva. That needs to be finalised. And so all the diplomatic pressure now from the West and from Russia is about trying to stop that fighting, at least publicly. Um, all sides are, have apparently, in terms of the, the big countries, signed up to the idea that this must now stop because of that crisis in Aleppo, because of the fact there's been such fierce fighting there uh, and so many people have been killed over the past 10 or 11 days. Um, but, of course, Russia, while it says it's an honest broker, uh, does support very strongly one side in this conflict. It's a, a main military backer, the main military backer of Bashar al-Assad. And while it wants an end to the conflict in Syria, it certainly wants an end or an outcome that is positive 
uh, for its ally. And so we have to bear that in mind as well uh, when we hear what the Russians say. And Matthew, as, as Fred mentioned, um, Russia has confirmed that it's carried out 87 sorties over the past four days. What is Russia saying about the hospitals that were hit in Aleppo? Um, it, it, not a great deal, actually. I mean, there have been two hospitals hit in Aleppo over the past week or so. Uh, one late last month in which 50 people were killed, uh, according to eyewitness reports. Uh, and sources on the ground. Um, on that attack, uh, the Russians have said that they, first of all, were not flying in the area when that attack took place, so they've distanced their own air force from that. But they've also gone further on that and said they don't believe the reports are actually true. They think they were, they, they think they were faked. That's something that came from the Russian Defence Ministry um, earlier today. Um, the second hospital that was attacked yesterday, well, that was in government-controlled uh, areas inside Aleppo. Uh, the Russians say it was a maternity hospital. There's been a, a number of casualties that have, have been confirmed dead, both dead and injured. Um, the Russians are blaming that attack on the al-Nusra Front, which, of course, is the al-Qaeda affiliate, which is not part of any of the uh, cessation of hostilities, any part of the ceasefire agreements that are being discussed. And so they're distancing themselves uh, from the attack on the alleged attack on the hospital uh, that was on rebel territory uh, and blaming the Al Nusra Front uh, for the attack that took place on a hospital inside government territory. Right, the blame game continues. Matthew Chance for us live from Moscow. Thank you very much.